In our three scenarios, we presented to you three different visions of the world in 2027. In this presentation, we will describe how each one could affect museums. We will then explore how these effects align with the Smithsonian Institute's five-year strategic plan and identify design opportunities for the Smithsonian Institute moving forward into the next 15 years. In the public good, federal works initiatives combat a recession, public organizations become privatized, and there is an increase in private corporate funding of the media, arts, sciences, and education. A hypervigilant and critical public eye surveys this world. Corporate bias and censorship fills the area of free content, while high quality information is available for those willing to pay. In this scenario, museums cope with privatization of information and funding. Boards have found themselves in vulnerable positions. Many have turned to private organizations, frequently corporations, for support. The goal on the side of the corporation is often not to turn a profit, but to build its brand reputation through that of the museum. The museum has replaced the nonprofit charity for many companies seeking to expand their corporate social responsibility initiatives. However, the reflection of corporate bias in exhibit curation, advertising, and other aspects of museums is widespread. This is not always an issue in the public eye, but there has been some backlash against companies who have censored content that was not aligned with their branding. A business-centric model has been applied to museums as they are privatized. Their brand strategies have become more complex. Advertising and public relations have started to follow corporate models. Product-centric approaches are common, leading to cross-branding between the corporation and the museum. These privatized museums function on many different levels for their parent companies. Some drive the business's branding, creating a stronger and more powerful public perception of the company brand, while some museums have been purchased primarily as profit-turning entities. It all depends on how the parent company is defining its return on investment. The National Federal Works Projects have already partnered with privatized museums several times. In Hoboken, New Jersey, Silver Spring, Maryland, and Meadford, Massachusetts, big brand museums have created satellite locations in developing urban areas. As the cost of living has driven a wedge more firmly between rich and poor, outlying urban areas have become more crowded and more run down. This has become the tipping point for the federal government to implement its public works project, aimed at stimulating the economy and building up these areas. These museums are perceived to bring excitement and revitalization to urban areas affected by the recession and undergoing infrastructure improvements. Museums unable to find private backing for their establishments are sometimes supported by local and state government, but this is rare. Mimicking how large companies have taken on museum ownership, cities, counties, and towns organize groups of businesses into trusts in order to be the financial backbone of institutions that the locality deems cannot die. In local solutions, a national effort to make the U.S. energy independent has led to the rise of small energy, local energy system solutions that are implemented on a large scale. The success of these systems has led to renewed senses of nationalism and localism. American culture is filled with rich social identification with France, rapidly accelerating advances in technology and a restructured workforce. In this scenario, museums take on deeper roles in education and the preservation of contemporary events. In society, people find value in the local museum experience. The U.S. federal government passes the Self-Sustaining Domestic Energy Act in 2017. Public museums are some of the first buildings converted to sustainable energy systems and removed completely from the national energy grid. This sets the precedent for small, self-contained systems that become exhibits in themselves. From solar power cells to grey water systems, every aspect has been designed to be visible to the public. To support the government's goals, museums have held events to call the public to action and adopt sustainable energy systems. In recognition of the importance of these changing times, museums archive and document the evolution and adoption of energy systems for future museums and exhibits. Museums also become more involved in the education system as a resource online as well as on the ground. The new museum websites educate on two levels, the museum content and the museum's changing energy systems. Virtual museum tours guide the user exhaustively through the systems with a voiceover 
explaining how they work and how they can be installed in the home. Live chat enables the user to ask docents questions from the comfort of their desk. Museums, especially children's museums, have assisted with the development of school curriculums, integrating tried and true hands-on teaching methods into the classroom. Digital collections gain importance as part of the expanding role of museums as an online resource. Despite this, museum attendance has remained high due to the primacy of the experience and the social aspects of museum attendance. The experiential value of museums becomes so important that it has led to the diffusion of experience technology such as augmented reality. Rising income in the U.S. leads to higher overall levels of education. This changes curation standards, creating a need for exhibits with more depth that provoke a greater degree of higher thinking and learning. Museums develop a broader set of methods to communicate their information in ways that are not only entertaining, but also serve this changing public taste. A better educated public leads to demands for more capable docents. Museums are able to spend more to meet this need, hiring the best docents available in a competitive job market. Localism becomes very important within communities, and branding of place can be seen in museums' marketing strategies, where, for example, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City is part of the branding of New York City, and the city is part of the branding of the museum. This becomes more important as tourism to the U.S. increases and cities buy for the cash flow this industry provides. In hard times, an environmental catastrophe builds up, causing widespread panic and tension. A water crisis puts the economy into a tailspin, opening the gap between rich and poor and forcing the federal government to take control of water access. Survival is foremost on everyone's mind. In this scenario, museums seek to serve the public as best they can, while creating a plan for the survival of their collections. Small museums in suburban areas close and sell their collections as people migrate to urban areas where water supplies are more reliable. The depressed economic climate pushes up the cost of maintenance and utilities, which become too expensive for many museums. Only the bigger museums who have money held in reserve and good contingency plans survive. Government funding is at an all-time low as funds are redirected to infrastructure and military. At the same time, museum goers can no longer afford to go to museums that charge admission, as prices of everyday items skyrocket due to rising water prices. As the government begins to ration water, museums must budget for water credit. Museums become a place to recharge and escape from the reality of the water crisis. Additionally, they gain a primary role in education, as the rising federal deficit pulls money away from public education. Parents seek alternatives to educate their children outside of the classroom and take them to museums, especially those for the sciences and natural history. Some museums are used as a way to educate the public on the water crisis, with exhibits serving to aid the generation of ideas which might solve the problem. Preservation becomes a more important role for museums with valuable artifacts. Concerned with survival of artifacts if a war occurs, these museums create evacuation and preservation plans for worst-case scenarios. In 2010, the Smithsonian Institute developed four scenarios of their own, projected five years into the future. In its strategic plan, the organization detailed its goals and strategies as a result of its in-depth scenario analysis. However, the Smithsonian only looked five years into the future. We have examined its goals and strategies alongside our own scenarios in order to explore the alignment between what the Smithsonian Institute is doing now and what actions it might want to take in each of our future scenarios. Due to the Smithsonian's reputation and status, it is implausible that the Institute would ever become fully privatized, as we suggest museums could become in the public good. 
However, the current Institute's strategic plan acknowledges that federal funding is increasingly insufficient to cover the Smithsonian's budget. The strategic plan calls for the Smithsonian Institute to pursue new revenue-generating opportunities and to become a more entrepreneurial organization. Looking forward to the next 15 years, the Smithsonian should consider what would happen to its federal funding and how its internal controls might change in a scenario like this one. The Smithsonian Institute should continue to pursue avenues of gaining financial independence and build up its historic reputation as part of America's identity, functioning as the nation's foremost museums. The federal infrastructure initiatives in this scenario provide a great opportunity for expansion. Temporary or permanent museum satellites in other cities around the U.S. could be a new campaign directed at leveraging the Smithsonian's reputation to enter new markets. In local solutions, the demand for more and higher quality information resources pushes the Smithsonian to develop thorough digitized collections, data sets, guides, and technology transfer initiatives. This is outlined in the strategic plan and should be a continued part of the Institute's strategy moving into the next decade. Making the Smithsonian Institute's knowledge available via partnership with other highly visible institutions through information technology is crucial for the future. Such an example could be partnering with Wikipedia to move content online and the multiple Wikimedia projects. Fostering the development of technological and informatic research will also be essential in contributing to a positive future. The Smithsonian Institute could take a leading role in a scenario such as this one by contributing to the development and diffusion of cutting edge research, such as the sustainable small energy system. The Smithsonian Institute should protect its artifacts and knowledge while considering opportunities to continue to serve the community in a survival scenario such as hard times. The Smithsonian Institute has articulated the goal of becoming an authoritative virtual presence for the purposes of preserving and creating access to the Institute's resources. This is a first step towards preparing for catastrophic events that might threaten the Smithsonian's collections and research. Contingency plans should also be established, and in the event that warning signs are apparent, Smithsonian Institute employees should be trained in their execution. Efficient use of resources and systems is stressed throughout the strategic plan, which holds true for all scenarios. Creating efficiencies within the entire institute will prepare it for when a slimming down of resources becomes essential for survival. After writing our scenarios and using them to analyze the future of museums, and more specifically, the future of the Smithsonian Institute, we have identified six key design opportunities. Business-centric entrepreneurial initiatives that focus on revenue generation. Identifying partnerships that will bring new sources of funding to the Smithsonian Institute. Leveraging the Smithsonian Institute's brand and reputation to expand into new markets around the U.S creation of extensive online resources, focusing on education and online engagement with the Smithsonian brand, collaboration with existing big players online, fostering development of new technologies and research, particularly those which work towards solving key problems regarding energy and the environment, engagement within the national community through deeper education initiatives, creation of contingency plans in case of environmental or other catastrophe.